Hi there, and welcome to Reflections with Rhonda Jones. My um, co-host is out today in the in the Deer Woods um, camping with the Girl Scouts, and so is Kimberly, and we're going to miss them awfully. But we do have Ruthie with us, per usual, thank goodness. And we have Kimberly's mother, Kathy. Y'all met her a couple of weeks back, and so she has... Um, I don't want to say relented and said yes, but she's very. She was very anxious to say yes. I will fill in. So you got to admire an attitude like that, Thanks. willing to help whenever it's necessary. That's Kathy. Thank you. So welcome. Uh, right off the shoot, we're going to talk about something that possibly this whole three-person panel might disagree on, and you that are watching via UStream. Um, Later on YouTube, we want you to uh, use the Ustream chat or info at newcovenantgroup.com and voice your uh, opinions on the same subject. There was an article, and for most of you that know, I am not much of a detail person, unless it's something I'm trying to gig my husband with, and then I remember all the details. But, <laughs> joking. Hey, baby. I love you. Um, okay, Dr. Jones is in the house watching, so I need to be on my best behavior. But actually, um, I was saying I'm not a detailed person, so I, I read an article and I gloss over the main things and try to get the meat and potatoes of it. Now, Ruthie and Kathy, they're more detail-oriented, but I just sprung this article on them, uh, Ruthie, possibly for the first time, because sometimes you get that dynamic when you're, you're want to to talk about a subject and you don't want to tell the person because you want their gut reaction. And I like to see that on somebody's face. Okay. We're going to talk about the article about the teen girl, uh, high school girl was going to go and get her high school graduation portrait done. And, and this was a long, long time ago, but all the girls would get real tan and we'd do our hair and we'd try to look the best we could for our portrait. Well, this school said, you, when you come, bring a prop, bring something that represents you to the photo session. And this teen girl brought her little baby with her. Um, the picture looked more or less like it might have been like one year old or, you know, something like that. Okay, so she has her picture taken. She moves on, goes, gets a call from the, um, this is my detail deficit problem. I'm not sure if it was the principal. I think it was somebody at the school that says, you know what, we're not using that photo of you with the baby. And she was like, what? Because this seems to promote teen pregnancy. And she was taken aback, of course, and they blamed it on the yearbook advisor made the decision. And everybody else could have brought whatever props they wanted, something that meant something to them and defined who they are. And I want to, before I go on further with the rest of the story, just from what I said, ladies, I want your gut instinct. And who wants to go first? You can do any, me, my, mo. I don't mind going first. Okay, Kathy, go um, for it. I totally disagree with the girl. I do not see a child as a prop. Um, there had to be other things in her life that she was proud of, uh, other than giving birth to a child when she was like 13 or 14. Well, she was a senior. Senior. But, but it was a one, it was one year old, so. So, yeah, junior. She junior. Had, yeah. It, it's just, to me, it's that, it just takes away from the graduate who we're honoring. And yes, I'm sure her child is a blessing to her, but I just don't see a prompt as a child. And I would not put my, my children in a situation where they were a prompt for me. And I'd rather just do it by myself than use my children in that manner. Okay, opinion well noted and appreciated, Ruthie. Well, I don't agree with the part of the child being a prop, but maybe she didn't think of it in, in that manner as a thing. It was something very important to her. And as a mother, 
that would be my most important thing at that time. Uh, so as a single mother or unwed mother or whatever term you want to use, and I see no problem with her bringing her child as an identity of herself. Okay. And I feel like Ruthie. <laughs> but Kathy does have a point. I never thought of it until Kathy brought it up about using a child as a prop. But, and I didn't go on with the rest of the story on purpose just to get, you know, your gut <clears throat> instinct. But she said that this child changed her life. It gave her responsibility. She realized what love was all about, things that children do for you. And you know what? I would have been up there just as big and proud with that baby right beside me, and I would have dared somebody to tell me I couldn't have what meant the most to me in this world in my picture. And so that's the way I feel. Um, but I did have to reconsider after Kathy said about the prop. You know, uh, if we just focus on that term prop, it does sound bad. I'll give you that, that she used it. But after you, you hear the rest of the story about how she changed and how she gained responsibility and she's working and she still graduated and she had to go to school, you know, being pregnant, but she still went. And, you know, I just gained so much admiration for her. Um, I did. I just thought she was like my hero after I read how it changed her and what she felt about the child. So any other comments? I don't see that the child's um, feeling would uh, impact the situation at all. Um, <clears throat> one year old doesn't understand why all these lights are on and bulbs are flashing and it to me a prompt is something, an item. It's it's not a person. And I just still believe I would not put my my child through that. Yes, it's an important event. Yes, I love my children. Um, but I don't want to use my children. Mm -hmm. And I believe mm -hmm. that's what was done in this case. Okay. All right. Ruthie, would you please say something? Well, like I say... Uh, to a mother of the child is one of the most important things in their life, regardless of what your age is. Uh, so uh, I see no, I, I don't see a problem with the child being her uh, identifying uh, thing. Uh, I, like I say, I don't know why the photographer would ask for a prop to begin with, but uh, that's something, you know, uh, I, I don't know, know about that part of it, but still, uh, if, if, if this girl understood that she's supposed to bring something that meant a lot to her and identified her, and her child did, uh, she probably didn't think of the word prop either, because I wouldn't, if, you know, Kathy, I know. I wouldn't have thought of it if <laughs> Kathy hadn't have brought it up. So. I wouldn't either. And, and you know what? That's the beauty of a conversation. Mm -hmm. If three heads thinking of something, Ruthie and I never, it never crossed her mind. But yet Kathy thought of it instantly. And that is one of the, to me, the hallmarks of the New Covenant group. If we just surrounded people with people just like us, we would just, to me, be like robots. Mm -hmm. But we surround ourselves with people that think in so many different directions that, yes, we hear things that are in opposition maybe to what we feel at this moment, and maybe it'll still be in opposition because there are things that I hear I know I will never change my mind on, mm -hmm. uh, and there are things I have changed my mind on, and that's your prerogative. But at the New Covenant Group, we want to surround ourselves with people unlike us. That is how you grow and change, and Ruthie and I, we grew a little bit today by listening to what Kathy had to say, yeah. and we reconsidered something about the word prop, and that just evolved organically. We didn't talk about it ahead of time. Um, I didn't know what she was going to say, and so that's the beauty of it. And as Bob Graves would say, give it 15 minutes, let it roll around in your head, and then you might reconsider some things. So, all right, that was a good life lesson there. Okay, next subject. Now this, 
And I'm sure people think I'm probably some person that'll shoot you in a heartbeat, but I really wouldn't. But I kind of admired this person too. Okay, this person, and I'm going to get some details wrong, but he was a, a Utah, like a Mormon bishop in the church. Uh, he was a young man in his 40s, and one of his neighbors was being accosted by uh, a man. He actually, she was leaving her home. He took her keys from her and then tried to enter her home and probably take her with him. You know, just an assault type thing going on, scary thing. His son saw it or heard the help, cries of help, ran and told the daddy. The daddy goes to his bedside and gets this big samurai sword, runs outside, confronts the man. And what do you think the man does? He stops. <laughs> I would too. I think I'd rather be shot than cut. What about y'all? Yeah. I think so. Getting shots quicker. <laughs> That's right. But this this bishop in the church brandishes a sword, samurai sword at that, but he teaches martial arts, so that was a prop, a prop I guess. That's the word of the day. Thank you, Kathy. Um, <laughs> and so he goes after this person, and then you know other neighbors help, and he even tries to, after the guy sees the sword, he, he leaves the scene, and the bishop, chases him because he didn't want him to get away anonymously so is it in your opinion okay for somebody um, the man of god or whatever to brandish a sword on somebody and then chase him down to make sure he doesn't get away i'm gonna go with ruthie first well i don't know about the sword but i <laughs> i would have found something that would have helped me to uh, be more powerful to help help the lady that was in distress uh, maybe that was the first thing he thought about because it's something he used all the time <laughs> with me. Uh, I don't know what I think of <laughs> my cross stitch needle, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's uh, I, I see no problem with it. just because you're a man of God. Uh, that doesn't make you any different from the man next door, for Pete's sake. I mean, we're all. We're all humans. We just have certain thoughts and, and stuff, and, and we're different that way. But we still have we still have the humanity in us to want to help someone that we see that, that needs help. And uh, I don't know that if I'd caught him, I'd have used it, I'd have cut him with it or anything, but at least it was something to scare him so that he would pay attention. So, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, Kathy, without going into a lot of personal history because you know you've had to protect yourself recently yes. uh, against people that are uh, intruder intruding mm -hmm. type people right. so uh, this man of god taking the sword out it is that good see i think this man of god thing is overrated i i really just think this was a person who wanted the title of man of god and not do the actions or the um thinking uh, like a man of God would. Um, the sword is just, I sleep with a butcher knife every night, so I don't really see any problem <laughs> with somebody having a sword. <laughs> um, but soon I won't have to do that. I'll yeah. be in a different situation. Um, but I do, I, I think it was a, a crazy thing to do. I, I certainly don't feel like he should have chased the man and left the lady there by herself. I think she needed some support from him instead of him chasing the guy. He'd give his best description as she could or he could. And then you got to just wait and pray and see what God does with that situation. But well, let it be God. Don't let it be man of God. Yeah. Well, I just yeah. I put that little moniker on there because he was like a, a bishop in the a mm -hmm. Mormon church. So I... You know, I just said man of God, that some people would attribute that to him. Right, right. And a lot of people will judge and say, oh, a man of God or somebody that has a position in the church shouldn't, you know, be violent or whatever. But he was protecting mm -hmm. a lady. Now, the chasing of the man after the fact, his um, comment was, I don't want, I didn't want him to get away anonymously. And I wanted to make sure you know, justice was served and he'd be caught or he could do that 
to somebody else. But in the backstory, or come to find out, this was a, a personal relationship at work that went sour. So the lady oh. did know him, but this guy didn't know it at the time. He he just, you know, he did what we all do. We just react, and we don't know the whole story. And um, I'm famous for, for things like that. Um, sad to say. But if you see someone attacking someone else, uh, do you stand back and wait to see if this is something that's personal between them and, and let the, the guy go ahead and do whatever it was he wanted to do? Uh, or, do you, or do you interfere? I mean, unless you know the story, are you going to go up and say, why are you doing this? You know, you know this is not good. Why are you? Uh, you know, I, you can't, you can't ju just look at something happening and say, well, this guy's in his rights because she messed with him or whatever, because you don't know that. And as far as the term man of God, is that a man's term or is that God's term? What man walking this earth does God consider his or only man considers him his? Right. So, yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. But um, needless to say, I think the guy, and I could be making this up, I think the guy turned himself in. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, to me, that's a big character mm -hmm. uh, brownie point to me if you turn your own self in when you do something right. um, against the law and I guess you know they're looking for you, so you just turn yourself in. We have some comments concerning our, our first subject. And um, Michelle says, uh, along with uh, Kathy, uh, and a child is not a prop, prop, and promoting teen pregnancy is just wrong. Right. Okay. <clears throat> you know, that's the, the gray area. I, you know, I don't think it was promoting teen pregnancy. You know what? You're pregnant, you're pregnant. Uh, to me, you don't need to be ashamed, down on yourself, and then hide away, um, go away and have the baby or whatever. Just, you know, at that point, sister, you need to embrace it, in my opinion. Once it happens, you just need to embrace it mm -hmm. and um, be the best mom you can possibly be. But outside of this subject, promoting teen pregnancy is not good. No, you know if I, if I step here and say you know I think all teenagers should be able to get pregnant if they want to, that's to me promoting teen pregnancy. Mm -hmm. I don't think that was. Um, some people do, so that's our opinion against their opinion. This versus that, and using our children is just wrong, absolutely. And all for love and love for all. God bless activism and the civil right movement. Yes, absolutely. NCG for the win. Thank you, Tally. Thank you so much. We always appreciate your comments. Um, so I want to hear what you think, too, about the, the samurai-wielding man of God, the mog, if you will. Uh, I say whatever you have, a shovel, whatever, and you have to protect somebody, you just have to protect somebody. Um, a lot of people talk about, well, Jesus came and he brought a sword, and but they really think it's this literal sword. He came to, you know, destroy people and kill people. No, he came to separate these mindsets from being so steeped in this uh, works religion. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what he did. And so as a follower of Jesus Christ, that's what I'm trying to do and, and we're trying to do. And so... Um, just because Jesus brought a sword doesn't mean it was a samurai sword right. or sword. Some people say sword. What do y'all say? Sword. Sword. <laughs> okay. That's the southern part. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's talk about something that is controversial just all by itself, poking fun. And when you poke fun, other people are going to be involved. Um, when you poke fun at yourself, is that okay? When you, and I'm, I'm getting somewhere with this. I'm trying to go somewhere with this. But the New Covenant group, on Halloween, we dressed up like um, church people. 
you know, a lot of us were in a charismatic type church before. And so it was Halloween and we dressed up. It was a parody and we had a lot of fun with it. Um, we involved Greg Bray and which obviously they're part of the new covenant group and, and Bob, and he was actually God. And, uh, we just had a blast. And even when we watch it, we even watch it probably once a week, parts of it, because it's just so funny to us. But sometimes when we reshare it on our Facebook wall or somewhere, people take exception to it. They say that we are making fun of uh, God's children. And could it be that we are? Let's just talk about it. I mean, because I don't want to hurt people, but... I think a good sense of humor is a sexy thing. I, you know, I'll be honest with you. It, it, I, I'm maybe that was a wrong word. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But it's it's a, a a good thing, Ruthie. Well, we have, and, and and this is one of my pet peeves. We have advertisements on TV uh, for a certain product. And the husband does his work with it, and she comes around and says, oh, but you, he does his work, cleans the floor, whatever, and she says, oh, but you should have used, and she, she puts her husband down in order to push this product. I disagree with that. A wife or a husband, neither spouse should ever put the other one down. I don't care what it's about and how much they're getting paid. That doesn't have much to do with poking fun. But we have comedians that poke fun at religion, at marriage, at motherhood, at fatherhood all the time. And nobody gets upset about that. They'll pay big bucks to go to a, a place and see this man or this woman poking fun at all this. And, and they don't get upset. But if you say something that they might take, then they get upset. Uh, so I just think we're maybe too sensitive. Uh, but with me, I'd be very careful about doing something like that unless it was someone I knew very, very well and I knew they could take it. But someone that I didn't know very well, I'd, I'd, I'd kind of be watchful of, of how I said it. So, All right. Awesome. Well, I'm kind of a straight shooter. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I, uh, give me the storyline again. I'm okay. sorry. We, um, on Halloween, okay. the people of the New Covenant group, we, yeah. we dressed up. You know, normally we don't stand on ceremony. You know, right. we don't okay. really, we can dress up. We do sometimes, but we just don't really dress up and mm -hmm. and be, we're not all churchy at all. And so we, um, you know, I, I was on the organ, you know, being the little strollop that was trying to catch the eye of the prophet or the man of yeah. God. And we just had a good time. Some were acting like they were speaking in tongues and mm -hmm. dancing and it was Halloween, and we dressed up yeah. to, in those parts, and we just had a ball. Some I, people take exception to that. I can't imagine what they would take exception to. Well, I think because there are a lot of people, and we call it, this is what we call it. I'm not saying it is. Well, I am saying it is because I call it that. But they're stuck in they're practices stuck. and mm -hmm. methods that, yeah, they're stuck on stupid. And uh, I'm <laughs> sorry to use those terms, but that's what it feels like to me. Um, and when you get in that position, your choices are fairly limited. You either stay that way or you get out of it. And just as an individual person, I can make those choices for myself, but I also have to consider um, the situation, that, that context that it's in. Um, I don't see anything wrong in it. I think it's just a wonderful day to be a kid again. Right, and, and that's kind of the way it, it was. And we were really poking fun at us, mm -hmm. you know, where we came from. And it, it did hit a lot of people. A lot of people still do that. You know, they still hype up. And they and to say that we had a particular person in mind that we were we were making fun of is not true. We did not. It was mainly things that we had seen participated in, you know, back decades and decades mm -hmm. ago. I have a question. If that uh, episode had been done 
by uh, some Southern Baptists or some people that weren't even religious, would there have been as much uh, feedback, a, a bad feedback, or was it simply because it was the New Covenant group? Hmm. That's a good question. And as you were speaking, I kind of followed where you were going to go with that. And I don't know. I, I think most of the people were digging at the New Covenant group, mm -hmm. but I think a select few, they just have a heart that they wouldn't make fun of nobody. They they wouldn't. And that's great, but we're funny people. People mm -hmm. are funny. I mean, you know, we make fun of each other and laugh. and I mean, people are funny, mm -hmm. and we know that. But to hurt somebody with it would be the last thing that the New that Covenant group would do. Right. But a lot of times I think the New Covenant group gets dinged because we, we're always, you know, love doesn't keep a record of wrongs. Love, love, love. And then people want to find something and say, well, this wasn't love and this wasn't love. And it's true. Sometimes... Mm -hmm. I don't act out of love, and but I, I strive to. And to tell you that I always do, I would be lying to you, but I always want to. That I do. And, you know, I, I would cry if I hurt somebody's feelings on purpose. I mean, that's, I, I just would. But Dr. Jones says this, and I really agree with it. Saturday Night Live can, can be raunchy, but they have come a long way in poking fun at, you know, uh, pillars of culture, mm -hmm. like the church. And uh, Dana Carvey does the church lady, and he is spot on to some ladies in church. Spot yeah. on. It just so happens that's true, and it's funny, and I think it's funny. But it also opens us up to conversations, and we can say, you know what? When I see somebody else do it, it looks stupid. Now, I know if somebody followed me around and mimicked me, I would change a lot about myself. I really would. And so, you know, maybe all two need to start mimicking some of the things I do. And if I see it in other people, I would say, wow, you know, that looks really stupid. And then I can see it myself in you. And then I'll say, I'll stop doing that. That's the way I, I learn a lot of times. What do y'all think? Poking fun at each other. Well, I think if you're going to put poke fun, you need to be able to accept fun poked at you, but you also <laughs> need to real, know the person mm -hmm. so that you won't do something that would hurt their feelings. And to be careful that someone else doesn't see it and their feelings get hurt because of what you did. Uh, so it, it's something, and, and I have no problem with it, it's just something we need to be aware of and not... Uh, do something that would hurt somebody else, you know, uh, poke our fun, but do it in a, in a place where it's not quite so public. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. I remember back in at uh, St. Patrick's Day, and we had a wonderful service and teaching that day. Um, and we had our lunch, and everybody said, where's the cornbread? And I, <laughs> I was the one that was supposed to make the cornbread. And I didn't, but I was poked fun. Yeah, people po poked fun about that, and I just felt more accepted mm -hmm. by it. Yeah, and I do, I do believe that we need to be able to to tease each other in love. Mm -hmm. And I, I, around people you know, um, gosh, there's a lot of things I need to change in my life, and God's working with me. And as long as he's doing that and I do my part, we're going to be okay. <laughs> and, so you're a team, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, that it was cute about the cornbread. And, yeah, and it was awesome. And we did. We gave her a hard time. And, <laughs> and it was funny. And um, It wasn't hurtful. It, it was, in fact, like I said, it just made me feel more comfortable. Um, yeah. To know I can make a mistake <laughs> and it's okay. Yeah, right. Uh, now if we all were like, shh, don't stop. She that she can't take it. You know? Yeah. Just, you know, that, that says mm -hmm. something about you that, you know, you're mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. I don't want to say you're not mature enough, but you would get your feelings hurt easily, yeah. you know. Um, but <laughs> I will say that we are going to do another Holy Ghost revival, and it's not going to be on Halloween this time. And, you know, if we're all God's children, then 
who can't make fun of their brothers and sisters. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's I, um, it's fine. Now, if people and people do, they they make fun of us and they say all kind of manner of stuff, and, and it it might hurt our feelings sometimes. But when you get to somebody's personal attributes, like mm-hmm. oh, you know, Ronald Jones was on the show today and looks like she's gained ten pounds. Well, that's true. I know it. You don't mm-hmm. have to tell me. <laughs> but you know, if you're making fun of somebody's um, personal attributes mm-hmm. to me that should be off limits yeah you know unless you know me and you want to joke about you know like i was at my mom's the other day and I, this is little cousin i hadn't ever seen before and she was there with her grandmother and uh, i i said well come sit on my lap so she she got kind of on my lap and i had a shirt on sort of like this and she like touched my arm and she was like your arm is wiggly and i'm like well, I know it's not like hard as a rock or anything, but to say that it's really wiggly, I guess it is, but maybe it's just soft. And then she kept like staring at me. And I, and then I, I said, uh, well, you know what? And this is a little kid. I said, it looks like to me your grandma's arm's wiggly too, but you don't have a problem with that. <laughs> this was a four-year-old child. Oh, I was like, why are you about my wiggly arm? It was like, Anyway, but that was funny. And then by the end of the, the evening, she said, you know what? This is about 45 minutes later. She said, you know, even your head is fat. And I thought, well, you know, I need a lot of humbling. And um, I, got, I got it from a four-year-old child. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you the whole story, but that was the gist of it. All right, poking fun of ourselves. It's it's fun. Okay. Um Whenever we interviewed Jim uh, Brayshaw, he's a fireman, in Canada and he wrote a book he, he went to discover and prove that Satan does exist so he did a lot of research but during his research like most people doing research for something they realize uh, there's no such thing so he realized that there's really not a literal Satan and so he he's written a series about that so trying to prove Satan he realized that there is not a Satan and good for him but one of his comments he made in some research I was doing, he said, when I stop believing in the devil, demons stop chasing me. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was so powerful. And it reminds me of this mind over matter thing. When you believe that there's a real devil out to get you and drag you down in the pit of hell, even though Christians will tell you, Oh, God doesn't send you there. The devil doesn't send you there. You send your own self there. Like, we would choose that, you know, another show. But it made a lot of sense to me. When I stopped believing in the devil, the demons stopped chasing me. So is there is there are there things that maybe you two have um, believed in, and then when you stop believing in it, something let go, and you could just have this big sigh of relief um my you know the uh, the big one is well it's not the biggest one but but hell when i realized that that is not a literal mm-hmm. place that you know god made for you know the devil and his angels or people send themselves there it freed me up to think in another direction and realize the true love of God and how it's so unconditional just by stopping believing in something. Well, this guy stopped believing in the devil, and I guess the demons disappeared. That makes a lot of sense to me. What about you ladies? makes a lot of sense, Mm -hmm. and that's something we could happen on a daily basis. Uh, Our demons always seem to wake us up first. (laughs) <laughs> and and attack when we're at our weakest. Um, so I wake up every morning before I take my pills. I I read the uh, First Corinthians thirteen, and it's it's so simple and it's so honest and it's so strong that love is patient and it's kind. And God's not sitting up there with this big black book writing people's names in it and putting checks or X's and because there's no record of our wrongs. And to me, if we can get to that sense of love in our heads, 
and <clears throat> excuse me, and in our hearts, mm-hmm. we've accomplished a great deal. Um, and I have been able to get rid of some some devils. Most of you know I used to do a lot of drugs, and praise God, I don't do those anymore. But it was one of the hardest things I had to deal with because it was my demon. Mm. And uh, thank, just praise God that it's not now. And that's the thing that was a devil to me, and it brought me down. And it was just like climbing back up by my fingernails. Mm. <laughs> you know, it, mm. it wasn't yeah. easy. Uh, God put me through my paces and said, we're going to do this. We're going to do it strong. And in that aspect, sure, somebody talked to me. (laughs) And um, I don't see that God is testing us because he loves us so much. He couldn't test us on our will or anything of that matter. So I think he's just loving us through our own hells. <laughs> right, right. You know, metaphorically. Until we, metaphorically. Yeah. Until we can see the other side. Absolutely. That's, that's yeah. a good way to put it because he, he certainly doesn't. Um, you know, we are our biggest enemy. And when we look in the mirror, we see our biggest devil. And it's ourselves. I mean, we are responsible. I, I saw something on a, a billboard one time, and it said, that, that life is the uh, sum total of all your choices. And it yeah, is. Yeah. It, it is your yeah. choice. And what Kathy said about God still loving us through it is fabulous. And it'll remain. Love remains, uh, Paul <laughs> tells us. And it, he's, it still remains whether we're good or bad. Um, it's best to be good, I'll be honest with you. But... Yeah. He still loves us through it. So, Ruthie? Are you well, I, I, I'm either at a disadvantage or an advantage, and you can take it either way. But <laughs> I knew God loved me before I ever knew there was a hell. So hell didn't scare me very much <laughs> because I knew that God loved me. But uh, I, I know that you can uh, let things bother you. And, and like he said, if you uh, get rid of them, uh, like, uh, nobody wants me around them because I'm a jailbird's daughter. And that's hard on young young kids, or teenagers especially. And when you learn to let go and say, well, it doesn't matter that I'm a jailbird's daughter because I'm me, mm-hmm. uh, then you don't see that they're looking at you like a jailbird's daughter. Now, that's something I went through that I know that it works. If you just if you just say, that's not me, that mm-hmm. doesn't have anything to do with me, that was him, then then you look at things differently and you look at people differently. Right. That, so, that's, that's great advice. So yes, that's that's one thing that I know works. If you if you get rid of it, then you then it's not there anymore. Mm-hmm. So. There you go. I that's heard that. Exactly right. Very good. And also, if you think about this, Whatever you do in life, if you do something wrong, bad, whatever, that doesn't, that's not you. That's something you did. Right. And so, you know, I can be um, Rhonda and I can do something, you know, I might have a problem in this area, whatever. That doesn't define me. That's not Mm -hmm. me. It's just something I do. I did. But I'm really something else. And I've just got to live up to all this potential that we have. And I was going to ask Ruthie, um, I appreciate everything you said, but whenever I, you know, I never thought I was going to help. I thought other people were because they didn't believe like me or whatever. When I realized that nobody was, I could love God more. I I had more respect for him, I guess, you know, when it all comes down to it. Because if you really think that somebody could put people in this, everlasting torture chamber you can't have a lot of respect for that and if you do then you you don't have a lot of care in your heart for other people as long as he loves me that's fine but um the people the hot and tots over in africa um and they die without hearing we believe they would go to hell that's why we had to get all those missionaries over there because you know they got to hear and you know and then some people make it up well if they don't hear hear it they, then they um, 
won't go to hell, then I would always think in my mind, well, don't send anybody over there because if you tell them about it and they reject it, they're going to go to hell. Just don't tell them. Well, I, did, I didn't worry about other people either. I think probably because I didn't think of hell as really something to be concerned about because I was never ever one that would join the door knockers. I didn't think it was necessary, so I didn't do it. Uh, a lot of people thought I was a lukewarm Christian, <laughs> but I just didn't. I just didn't see why I need to go and, and tell you what you're doing is wrong. You're an adult. You know what you're doing is wrong, and I don't have the right to judge you and tell you what you need to do. And and so I just I just looked at things different. Although I was taught there was a hell, if you didn't do so and so and so and so, you was gonna go to hell. I don't think I really deep down believed it. I knew God loved me before I even knew anything about church, before I ever knew anything about hell and stuff. So I had this God's love theory in, in me that kind of overrode some of the other stuff I heard. So Yeah, yeah. I, I say sometimes that if people really and truly believe there was a literal hell, you couldn't go to sleep at night. You yeah. could not mm -mm. sleep at night because you would think, man, people are, are suffering there in torture and you know people I know that don't go to church are gonna you just would be a basket case mm -hmm. and sad to say the theory of there being a hell has crazed so many minds and sent so many people to insane asylums have caused so many women to kill their children because they don't want them to go to hell so they're gonna mm -hmm. And that's their own confessions of the research I've done. I, I want to kill my child so he won't grow up and be rotten or mean or whatever. And, and so he can just go right to heaven. The theory of hell has caused so many deaths, so many um, mentally ill people. And we have the church to thank for that. And it's a sad commentary. It really is. All right. Any closing thoughts? We have about three minutes. Y'all good. You good. I just like, you know, I, my mother told me one Saturday afternoon when I, Sunday afternoon when I was about 12, you need to get saved tonight. And I had a Southern Baptist uh, preacher as my father. And so, yeah, you know, I walked the aisle and shook his hand, love you, Dad, <laughs> you know. It didn't mean a thing. It was something I was supposed to do. About a year and a half later, she came to my room. Honey, you know you need to go rededicate your life. Walk that aisle again. And I got nothing. I didn't feel anything <laughs> different. And I thought, uh-uh, it's got to be. I was real popular at church, but I wasn't at school, you know. Uh, I was the preacher's kid at school, and I was just a fun-loving kid at church. But finally, God got through. Mm. And uh, when you first get that little glimpse of God and his love and what he has in store for us, your life changes right there. And um, you can become stronger. You can make mistakes and even laugh about them yourself because uh, there's no record of wrongs. Very and good. thank God. Wow. Yeah. I couldn't have closed the show any better. And I just... Thank you, ladies, for your comments today. And we just want to let you know that this evening, um, I'm going to look at this real quick. Exactly. Keep telling it like it is. Rhonda, keep speaking up on that. It's time to end the silence. Great. Okay. Yes, absolutely. You keep, I mean, I'm telling you, Tally just goes on and, and she'll make comments. And she's such a big proponent. And she helps move this movement forward and we think everybody that's commented and everybody that's um on the job helping this thing go forward also now tonight at 8 p.m uh, central daylight savings time we're gonna have sarah moorhead here at the place and she is the um, one of the directors i believe of recovering from religion if you want to find out a little bit more about her um and tally you'd be very interested in this because i know that you have been very hurt by religion and, and actually suffered spiritual abuse but you can go to i believe it's recoveringfromreligion.org and read about it but she'll be on tonight for two hours with us also something new we're going to have a, a um i think it's an atheist or a free thinker behind us or in, in a, another shot um actually painting 
on a canvas during the show when by the end of the show we'll have a, a picture and mm -hmm. so uh, his name is vince loria and we're looking forward to that please be with us at the place don't forget the rest of our shows today look them up um everybody has something to say and that includes you and we'll see you next week on mother's day thanks
Thank you.